handle there. Before you ask, yes, it's really that cold in here, I have no heating, so there you go. Anyway, a few days ago I was researching the Shimano 91000 XTR, and one of and on one of the videos I watched uh, the reviewer and a YouTube channel called Love MTB noticed that the cage on the new XTR rear derailleur is bent slightly to the outwards. So he posed a question: Why would Shimano do that? Because apparently all the XTR derailleurs have this bend. So I'm going to show you a horror story about my drivetrain, which is a result of temperature dropping below freezing and then rising up again. So I have this sludge of snow and street salt or road salt on the on my drivetrain, which causes havoc to it, and I can't really clean it because even if I did, I would get dirty in a matter of seconds. Anyway. Using this horror story, I'm going to show you why I think Shimano did what they did and why it is intentional. So, here goes. Ta-da! As I told you, it's going to be horrible, but the weather is what it is and I can't really maintain my drivetrain properly. So, this is your one by drivetrain, 11 at the back, 30 tooth chainring on the front. Ignore this little chainring here, because I'm not really using it as a one by Irrelevant. 11-speed cassettes are fairly wide. Actually, they are so wide that the chain line on the lowest cog, on the lowest gear, is rather awkward. The biggest cog on the cassette is being approached by the chain on the lowest gear, obviously, at an angle that's not really optimal for proper operation of the drivetrain. It causes slightly increased wear, but that's not really important here. If a chain approaches the chain ring, at an angle that is uh, not really in line with the with the chain ring, then there might be uh, some meshing issues. This is one of the reasons why you're having uh, problems with back pedaling on one by drive trains. Anyway, uh, the important part about this entire equation is the triangulation of the angle and the deflection between the chain ring and the cog on the cassette. And that's uh, mostly in, uh, influenced by uh, the length between uh, the cogs. So, let's measure this. On this particular bike, it is something about 440 millimeters, so 44 centimeters. However, the interesting part about this is the length of free chain between the smallest pulley on the, cassette, on, on the rear, rear derailleur and uh, the chain ring here. So, as you can see, this is 38 centimeters. This is 6 centimeters less than on the upper part of the, of the drivetrain. Pulley here is very small, not unlike the biggest chain ring, biggest cog on the cassette. So, the, uh, the problems which are caused by uh, really unoptimal uh, angle of approach of the chain to the cog are even more pronounced uh, here than here. Moreover, you can usually c consider the chain to approach the chain ring in this direction, which is narrow wide, which is very secure. Unlike here, where you're dealing with a, a little pulley that's not really narrow wide. SRAM designs notwithstanding. This arrangement causes uh, this pulley to act as a problem because it gets noisy and more importantly, it wears pretty fast. In this particular bike, it isn't really bad because uh, I have quite a bit of chain here. However, if you used one of those massive cassettes, like this one, this is 1152, uh, then you could probably see the cage being bent or rotated like this, which makes this run of the chain even shorter, so the, all the problems are even more pronounced. Alright, this is a typical derailleur, and this is its cage, which is completely straight. If I take the lowest pulley, like this, and offset it to the outside of the bike, like Shimano does on the XTR, the angle at which the chain approaches the pulley gets lessened, which means that the issues caused by chain line, which is noise and wear, are much lessened. This is more important on the 12-speed drivetrain because the cassettes on the 
12 speed drive trays are even wider. So this is how you fix the issue of the chain line on this one by drive trains. By offsetting the pulley to the outside, the angle of approach of the chain to the pulley is lessened, so the all issues that are caused by bad chain line are lessened in the lowest gear and kind of equalized through the entire range of the uh, derailleur motion. Unlike in SRAM design, which relies on the narrow wide uh, profile of this lower pulley, which solves the issue of chain security, which is also a problem if you're not using the narrow wide. However, the problem of noise and wear persists. Simply put, Shimano was smarter than SRAM in their design of a 12-speed drivetrain. So there you have it. This is why I think that Shimano did what they did and I don't really want to deliberate more on it because it's really not that complicated. However, uh, this answers the most important of the question posed by the Love MTV. Yes, it's intentional and Shimano knows what they're doing. So, thank you for your undivided attention and see you on the next one.